he broke my shoulder blade. I had to just let that heal by itself and carry on going to work every single night to, to have clients sometimes, 25 people in one night with pneumonia, a broken shoulder blade, no food, no drink. I mean, it was just, it, it, it is unimaginable to think this actually happens every single day and it happens still all over the world. It's una vergüenza. It's an absolute shame. It's un delito it's contra la humanidad. It's a crime against humanity. It's una forma de esclavitud. It's a form of slavery. Y como cristianos, and as Christians, los que sufren, son la carne de Cristo. For those who suffer are the body of Christ, the flesh of Christ. La humanidad Humanity todavía no aprendió a llorar. hasn't learned how to cry, how to lament. Necesitamos muchas lágrimas. We need many tears. Para entender to, in order to understand la dimensión de este drama. The dimension of this drama. Father, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Since Pope Francis called upon the global community to join together to combat the scourge of human trafficking, much has been achieved. The effort is being coordinated here in London. As one of the world's leading international cities, London is a notorious target for traffickers. Trafficking defies easy generalisation. It is an international issue that eclipses national borders, gender, ethnicity and age. It happens everywhere and anyone can become a victim. Raids by the Metropolitan Police across London have seen many successes. In Chelsea Harbour, in Alexandra Palace, in Canary Wharf and in Tooting. which have led to multiple convictions of traffickers. But capturing and convicting the traffickers is only part of the solution. Equally important are the restoration and rehabilitation of the victims. Rehabilitation is, is a journey for everybody, but what I've definitely learned is you absolutely cannot do this alone. You need organisations who understand the issue and who want to help and provide that support and a safe place, which is why the Paquita project, I think, is so incredibly important. They're trapped. They're being victimised by violence and by abuse. And on the other hand, they don't know who to turn to. So it seems to me sometimes they may ch turn to a place of faith. So practically, it's been a partnership between Caritas Westminster, um, the team at the Bishop's Conference, um, but also the Metropolitan Police, thinking about how we could create and support an environment where victims of human trafficking could be um, supported really at the earliest possible opportunity. It's a combination of survivors, a combination of authorities, of NGOs, of all different organisations really joining together and having a collaborative approach. Well, the environment needs to be a place of welcome. It needs to be light needs to be peaceful, it needs to be a space where victims of human trafficking can begin their journey of restoration. We're developing a partnership with St Mary's University um, who are also going to be able to provide some direct support to victims, victims of trafficking in their restorative process. Caritas Westminster is a practical expression really of the Catholic Church's uh, intention and desire uh, in London but also nationally and globally uh, to reach out to those people who are in need and victims of human trafficking are often invisible, no recourse to public funds, no identity traumatised by their experience, they are amongst the most marginalised people uh, that we feel that we have a duty to reach out to. 
Having Pope Francis speak about this issue is incredible. A figure and a leader such as him to really shine a spotlight on the issue of human trafficking is exceptional. Listening to Sophie has really touched me very deeply. And of course, listening to the other survivors of trafficking is something that touches people's hearts and helps us to understand the true horror of this form of modern slavery, this human trafficking. And that's why the role of religious women and others who work in support of those who have been trafficked is so important, not just here, but around the world. One thing that's made a big difference is the cooperation that we've built up in London with the Metropolitan Police. The police have won the trust of the religious women and now we work together. But perhaps most of all, we have this astonishing leadership from, from Pope Francis, who is just so committed, so dedicated, so vigorous in what he asks of us. So I'm delighted that at this point, we're at the verge of starting our work in Bakita House. It's a place of safety. It's a place where people will recuperate. And I think it'll become a centre of excellence. I hope Bakita House will be a model that others can follow in other parts of the world. Because this is a worldwide problem. And we really want to do all we can to foster those connections, that cooperation between police forces, the resources of the church, the volunteers and the resources of others and donors, so that bit by bit this Santa Marta group can affect a really worldwide network of support for those caught in trafficking and the arrest and prosecution of those who perpetrate it. This is a crime against humanity and we're going to work hard to counter it today. The Paquita project is is just fantastic. I I wish I would have had a house like this to come to um, with such an incredible environment where victims can rehabilitate and start the process from victim to survivor.